We're back discussing Servant Season 4, Episode 4, titled Boo, an episode that shows Sean seeing the true colors of Leanne while she hunts for enemies on Halloween. I have so many fun theories that I'm excited to share with you all today. For example, who's the mole that's close to the Turner's family that's also working with the church that's not named Roscoe? But also, I will be addressing you all's theories, like what if Bev and Bobby are actually witches? But my personal favorite, what if it's revealed that Dorothy is the mother of Leanne? We'll be discussing that and so much more in today's spoiler review. But before we get into it, let's start the conversation in the comments below. What did you all think about this fourth episode from the direction, the set design of it being Halloween to what deeper meanings, what Easter eggs, what theories did you all take away after watching this fourth episode? And as always, if you all enjoyed my review breakdown, make sure you're hitting the thumbs up button as well as sharing this video to anyone and everyone you know that loves talking about this show just as much as we do. With all that being said, let's get into this week's breakdown. Full spoilers ahead. We open this episode on Halloween day as we see a kid smashing a pumpkin, which to me was an homage to my favorite horror film of all time, 1978's Halloween. And there's another Easter egg that I'll be talking about later as we see Leanne having a conversation with her mannequin mother about ever being afraid of yourself. As she details her recent dreams and how she hurts people when she's upset, and the scariest part of this is Leanne doesn't just like it, she loves it. And we see this dark and sinister lass come out of Leanne. We cut over to Dorothy who's watching an old video of when Sean and her used to be a power couple, but we all know those days are long gone. This to me was a scene that showed early on of Sean planting the seeds of him yearning for these moments to get again with Dorothy. And by the end of this episode, they're finally on the same page. But before we get to those moments, we cut over to Bev and Bobby, who are on the hunt of their own, looking for an outfit for little Jericho to wear on Halloween. We see Leanne believes when she was younger, she was always told that Halloween was for children, only to hear from Bev and Bobby that Halloween is a perfect time to embrace your fears and indulging in your darkest fantasies. Now, was it me or did it almost feel as though Bev and Bobby were encouraging this type of behavior from Leanne? Almost as if this was part of a plan that was discussed a little bit later in this episode by Roscoe and Uncle George. Now the question comes up, who team are you on? Team Leanne or Team Dorothy? As Sean continues to try to do anything to get the good graces back in his wife by decorating the house for Halloween, we see Julian mentioning to him which side he's on, which is Team Leanne, and he's going to be sticking on that side. And he says that Sean should be on Leanne's side because, hey, Sean, haven't you noticed that everything's been going great, especially when it comes to your career? Now, taking a look at this scene to me and a little bit later in the episode, as we see all these people coming up to Sean, talking about how they're big fans of his show, we see Sean realizing that it's always been his career that's created this distance and created this tension in his relationship with Dorothy. Now, remember, what happened when Jericho was first born and we saw Dorothy alone as a new mother when Sean left to go to work? Something bad happened. And it always seems when Sean's not home, something bad happens. And we see Sean taking the decision and making the choice, who is he going to pick, his career or his wife and his family, Dorothy? We'll be breaking that down a little bit later, but now let's get into you all's theories, which is what if Bev and Bobby are maybe witches? Now, personally, I don't like the idea of the show adding witches and the show adding another layer of supernatural for the simple fact is we don't even really know what is the supernatural that's inside of Leanne. But I will admit, the idea of them being witches gained a little bit of traction in this week's episode, especially when we see them wearing hats that we would see witches wear as we see them showing Dorothy Jericho's Halloween costume, which she wasn't a fan of. But can we take a moment to look at this shot on the screen now? Is it me or does it almost look like there's a cross above Dorothy's head, kind of symbolizing the religious aspects of this show and also symbolizing that it will be religion that might save the Turners? I don't know. I might be wild on that theory, but let's get back to the main plot. And in particularly, getting back to a plot that was really focused on in last year's season, which was the memory loss of Dorothy. We know when it comes to Jericho, she's completely forgotten about what happened and losing her son. As she details how when she tries to remember what happened the past year, it hurts. It's almost as if her brain is rejecting her past memories and she knows that there's something that she's forgetting. Now, when it comes to trauma, we all know that everyone handles it differently. And it seems to be that Dorothy's way of handling this traumatic event is she just forgets it. She just erases it from her memory. Not purposefully, it just might be 
a defense mechanism that her brain just automatically does. Which brings me to the theory, what if Dorothy is Leanne's mother? Now, let's talk about it. I'm 50-50 on this idea, but just kind of thinking about the events that took place last week with seeing Leanne laying at her bedside, something that Dorothy used to do to her mother when she was a child, but also just thinking about just certain events that take place in the past previous seasons. For example, the obsession that Leanne has for Dorothy since day one, but more importantly, this memory loss idea and what seems to be something that Dorothy suffers from. Let's dive into this. What if she at one point was a member of the church, maybe not the lesser saints, but a church in specifically, and what if she was told she was, she had a child, she wasn't married, and the church told her to get rid of the baby or to give up the child? And we would imagine that's something pretty traumatic, right? And what if Dorothy completely forgot that she even had a child? That brings me to the idea that maybe that's something that happened to Dorothy. She gave birth to Leanne, she was told to give it up, and she just forgot that she was a mother of Leanne. And even taking this to another level, and it's not maybe even tying it to her being a mother, I think that they are related in some way, somehow. Let's talk about that in the comments below. Meanwhile, Sean gets more compliments from people in the neighborhood as Leanne looks down upon him from her room. Speaking of Leanne, we see her spying on a new neighbor who appears to be looking very suspicious as we see her gently rubbing that dagger that she's going to be taking with her on her journey to hunting down her enemies a little bit later. But speaking of Leanne, we see her gifting her cult members costumes to wear for Halloween and she shares a secret with them. Sin can sometimes be fun. Again, this goes back to me saying Bev and Bobby set her on this path to kind of really ignite this plan that might be in play. Now, taking a moment to praise the show's production and how they always seem to showcase Spruce Street from various seasons from the block party, but in particular, I thought the way that they set up the street for the block event for Halloween was pretty awesome. Let me know what you all thought about that. But as we see Sean and Jericho getting ready for trick-or-treating, Sean thinks he sees someone in the streets a little bit later in the episode, and he thinks he sees Uncle George, but he kind of brushes it off. We're going to get to a moment that I think wasn't shown this episode, but we all know that that was Uncle George, and I really find it interesting that he's dressed up in a ghost outfit. Kind of dived into my thoughts on him dressing up as a ghost and having meaning. Number one, everyone believes that he's dead, but we all know that he's not dead, so him dressing up as a ghost to me is very hilarious. But also going back to my comments on how this episode is kind of an homage to 1978's Halloween. If you all have seen that film, you all can see on the screen now, this was the exact same type of outfit that Michael Myers wore when he killed those teens. So I love this kind of tie-in to not only Halloween, but also the idea that, hey, I'm Uncle George, I'm dead. I'm going to dress up as a ghost. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. Meanwhile, as the night arrives, we see Leanne listening to some smooth music while getting ready to take on the night and go on this hunt as she's dressed up as a doll. Now, to me, I was trying to think, what is the deeper meaning or, or why does she choose to dress up as a doll? Thinking about it a little bit deeper, to me, I always look as dolls as something that's comfortable for some people or displays this sense of innocence and to me this is kind of a great idea for her to dress like this because you wouldn't think someone dressing up as a doll would be someone that is capable of defending themselves but that's the perfect thing that Leanne wants you to think she wants you to think she's defenseless so she can attack you especially her going on this hunt I think that might be the deeper meaning in the doll outfit let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section as she decides to scare kids by grabbing them and telling them things to make them be fearful, again, what Bev and Bobby told her about fear, but also going on this deeper path that we see her on, fast forwarding over to seeing Mr. Toby surprisingly in as he wants to spend time with her, but she's more focused on this hunt, but he is allowed to hang out with her for the time being as the hunt begins. We're going to talk about Toby a little bit later. I have a big theory I'm going to share with you all but we see Leanne going to neighbor's house number one and these neighbors are just simply minding their business hosting a party so she strikes out but she also ditches Toby but we see someone else dressed exactly like him following her on to house two, Leanne invites herself in to that same guy who she was spying on early in the episode. He has no idea what's going on, especially who she is, so it essentially seems like this is strike two, but 
this guy is up to something, right, guys? He seems really weird. Let me know if you all have some suspicious things in mind when it comes to this individual. As we see Leanne makes her way to another house, and the Toby dresser like continues to follow Leanne and decides to pull out a knife, thinking that they're scaring her as she's been preparing for this night in this exact moment, and tells them she's not afraid, and proceeds to break that individual's arm, only to discover that it was just a kid praying her. I love that moment, number one. It was just so dark and sinister of her to break that person's arm. But number two, this is a complete 180 of the Leanne that we saw so afraid in last season to even step a foot outside the Turner's house. And connecting this exact moment to last year's episode, which was titled Tiger, which you all remember was a very similar situation where there was a block party. And we saw Leanne in that episode. She was the victim. She was the prey. And now we see the complete complete opposite she's the hunter so i love that character development and seeing that arc in a character from last season into this season now it's also important to note that uncle george is witnessing this as roscoe sees all the cult members dancing and drinking and yet again embracing the sin that leanne told them to do we get more of Leanne frightening children in the streets as she comes across a little girl and comes face to face to her and decides to scare her even further and not just a little girl but everyone nearing them as the lights that are hanging on the streets and the street lights start to burst and yet again we see that sinister smile on Leanne's face. As we cut over to Roscoe meeting Uncle George, who lets him know that her ideas are spreading to others, also can't forget that her chaos has been spreading across the city, but these next lines that Uncle George says to Roscoe are very important. George tells him that they may have waited too long to stop her, as Roscoe mentions this plan that may be in jeopardy, but also mentions that this plan must be followed through because he must protect his family. This must work, it can't fail, if Leanne wins, there will be no world. Chaos accelerates and the city falling is just the beginning. Uncle George reminds him of the importance of the Turner family and goes on to say the following. Fear not, certain pieces are already in place. And if I'm not mistaken, even the Turners will be willing to help us. So let's talk about a theory that I have right now with you all. I believe he's referring to maybe a couple characters. One might be Sean himself, who may have secretly met with George in this very episode. Also, I've always had suspicions about Sean and his relationship with religion in his entire series, and I've always been a theory fan that he might actually have been a part of the Lesser Saints. Let me know your thoughts on Sean and George having a conversation in this episode that we just didn't see on screen. But maybe he was referring to being in touch with Dorothy or maybe even Julian himself. Who in the Turner family has been talking to Uncle George? Let me know in the comments. But, but more importantly, besides Roscoe being the mole, what if he was referring to someone else inside the house? What if he was talking about Bev and Bobby, who we know Bobby was in Scarlet last week, but what if they have some connection with the Lesser Saints? But this is my fun theory that I'm excited to share with you all. What if he has Toby working with the Lesser Saints? What if he is the actual mole? It just dawned on me that he's always tried to be so close to Leanne from the very start. I've always believed, why in the heck is Toby still staying around the turns? Yes, I know he works on work with Sean and get this opportunity to be a chef in his own right, but the kid has been through hell. Hell, they even blackmailed Toby at one point. So I always wondered, what is kicking him so, so connected to this family? And it dawned on me. He wants to get close to Leanne because he is working with the church. And we all know when you get close to Leanne, she doesn't expect it. She doesn't expect the turners to turn on her. And she definitely wouldn't expect Toby to turn on her. Let me know your thoughts. Is Toby working with Uncle George? And is he possibly a member of the Lesser Saints? Now we wrap up this episode with Leanne arriving back from her amazing night and yet again has some more good laughs. He sees Sean tells her that he's very thankful for everything she's given him but he wants to take back everything if it means he can get his family and more importantly get Dorothy back. We see Leanne tells this man 
You've made a choice. You're an adult. Deal with the consequences. As we see, Sean enters Dorothy's room and apologizes for taking Leanne's side this entire time, but that is no more. He will stand by her. He's not okay with losing her. It's time to get Leanne out of this house by any means necessary. And now Team Leanne has changed over to Team Dorothy. Wow, I really enjoyed that moment. Them being on the same page is something we've been dying to see. I don't think we've ever really seen them on the same page. We've heard of them being in love and power couples, but this is the first time we're going to actually see that. But it still makes me wonder, where does this go from here in regards to this decision by Sean? Because we all know if they do get Leanne in this house, that means Jericho is gone. And we also know when it comes to Dorothy and her love for Jericho, she's mentioned many times, especially last year, if she loses Jericho again, she's willing to take her own life. So that's kind of a catch-22 for Sean, right? How is he going to manage to get Leanne in the house, but also keep Dorothy and Jericho without losing both of them? Let me know your thoughts on this idea of Sean and if it's going to end up panning out for the better or for the worse. Personally, I very much enjoyed a lot of elements in this episode and just looking at last week kind of in a sense of if this was a film, last week was the end of the first act of a movie where this to me is the beginning of the second half gearing up for this ultimate showdown between Team Leanne versus Sean and Dorothy, but I guess where does that leave Julian? Do you all suspect Julian to eventually come on his family side or stick with Leanne? Let's speculate about that, but speaking of speculation, share your thoughts below on who do you think the mole is that's working with the Turners? Is it Sean? Is it Dorothy? Is it Julian? Or is it Toby himself? As well as what's going to happen when it comes to them trying to get Leanne out of the house yet again? Is that where we're going to see that dark shadow monster reappear? Let me know your thoughts on all that. Speaking of things to look forward to this week, ladies and gentlemen, I will be getting a chance to see M. Night's new film, Knock at the Cabin, which by the time this video is out, I should have a review you on the channel and possibly an ending explained for that very film. So keep an eye out for that. I'm going to leave that on the screen as well as in the description of this video. Whew, this was a lot and I really enjoyed this episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And again, before you all leave, just a friendly reminder to like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel if you all haven't already, and make sure you hit that notification bell. You all have been awesome. Hope you're staying safe. We'll catch you all on the next breakdown.